Three. We'll do it live! F*** it! The general craziness of it, the impact on your life. We have gone through so many stories and we said, you know what? This should not be kept to the two of us. Look at this. Look at this look that I'm serving you today. Can we can we count up all the ways you're against code? Yes, let's do it. Hair. Yeah, it's it's not even a it's not even a good ponytail. It's just a wad. Yeah, that's totally not okay. Earrings. Yep, too long, too dangly. Mm -hmm. Um, is your shirt in code? I can't really tell. It's just it's just a regular shirt. But check my shorts out. These are def not in code. Oh, that t-shirt is not. That, that looks like a t-shirt. It's so a t-shirt. I'm gonna go it's with a t-shirt and shorts. Not in code. Shorts yeah. not in. I'm not in code. Nothing yeah. about me is in no. code. No. But honestly, I do look better when I'm in code. <laughs> <laughs> but I was busy. I got stuff to do, whatever. So I used to, um, as you know, I'm, I'm not a hair washer every day or I yeah. used to in Ohio a lot wear my hair up. Um, especially when it was dirty. Cause I liked right. it. I like my hair up. Um, yeah. And so I got like a soft request from management, like, oh, well, you should really wear your hair down. And um, I think so I would wear it down more, but I still wasn't. Like, if you if you tell me something, I will probably follow the rules, but it wasn't a hard right. and fast. But it was yeah. more like, uh, you look better, but, you, but maybe they thought you did, but okay. So right. yeah, right. So of course, what happens is the next time we had a consultant in, and I told you we had five zillion consultants there, <laughs> yeah. um, she said, you know, you shouldn't, you, you really shouldn't wear your hair up at all period. But and I why? Said, did, like, oh, did I said, is that coming from, I said, is that coming from management? And yeah. she said, yes. I said, oh, now I get it. Okay. You know, you just yeah. could have told me, but it's always right. the consultants who are the ones who yeah. bring down the hammer on those but things. They're bad news, if you will. Yeah. I mean, literally though, I mean, if I'm honest, it is a visual medium. Look at me right now compared to with my hair down. It's not as good. See. I, but I mean, like, I have my devil hooks going out here a little bit. <laughs> oh, I, I have those, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's you like, devil it's hooks. Not, good. That's, yeah, well, they used to be really crazy. Like, <laughs> anytime it would get hot, they would go like, boing. So, I mean, look, I get it. I have a bigger forehead. We've discussed this before, all the things. But, like, sometimes life gets in the way, and that's what isn't allowed to happen <laughs> when you're on TV. Mm -hmm. But, in part, they are paying you to look a certain way. So, mm -hmm. I get it. Mm -hmm. Like, this is not my – this look I'm serving is not my best. There but was a time – too, when I wore a ponytail and then I got called into the boss's office after the show <laughs> and another coworker said, well, she's either getting called in because she's wearing a ponytail or she's being fired. Could be one or the other. One or the right? other. Oh, Thank the pony. it was the ponytail that day. Hopefully it was the ponytail. Um, so I realized, Megan, we are not doing a good job of housekeeping, which means we need to say, hey, welcome to our channel. Please like and subscribe. Turn your notifications on. We really appreciate it. Comment. We will read and respond, too. Yeah, we will, actually. Are you doing that to me? Come on. Um. <laughs> Also, Instagram got me. I saw these. What happened to me? Um, Aaron, you, Aaron, you've had a day. I but have, okay. Have you seen what? these on Instagram? So I got no. one for me and one for Maya for her first day of school. Oh. oh. Yeah. Which they're in school now. Can we talk about that? Yeah, finally. Maybe this is dubs, which actually um, segs into our combo into for the, the day. Dub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Working on our fitness, Megan. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, when you are on TV, it, it is this, this is nothing. I'm not even talking about management in this moment. What I am talking about is you as a human being having confidence in the fact that you look good when you are standing on a weather wall or sitting at a desk. Like this has nothing to do with like anybody told us to do anything. No, 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 no. This is literally just when you're on TV, you want to look good because you have to look at yourself all day. Now, your definition of good should be good enough. That's a topic for another story. But I feel that when I'm in shape, when I'm, you know, and I'm not even talking about a certain weight, but like when I feel good about myself is when I feel strong and I feel like my, my clothes fit well and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So we in our past life, and I think this is something that 
I love that carried through, like, I'm still really into working out, physical fitness, doing all that kind of stuff. Like, it's really important part of me, I think, being happy. Um, and you and I have both had our turns with CrossFit through the years. And it's something that both of us keep coming back to. But the the thing that, <laughs> that I find amusing about it, Erin, is that, like, it, what I like is that you can get your workout done relatively quickly, usually. You get a lot of bang for your buck. You know, you're going to like basically kill yourself in that 45 minutes or Mm -hmm. 10 minutes or however Mm -hmm. long the workout is. But the issue is how many times did you have to cover up like bruises, (laughs) bruises right here that made it look like you were being I just that photo. You know what? I might pull it up while you talk because I have a photo and I tagged my CrossFit coach in it because I am interviewing Mitt Romney when he was running for president. Okay. So this is when I was in Ohio okay. and he was only granting, this was right towards like right before election day. And okay. he was only granting interviews to reporters who were in swing states. And so it was Ohio. I was with a reporter from Florida because we were at like a department of education event. Okay. Um, Okay. You talk while I find this photo though. Okay. So my point in this is if you're not familiar with CrossFit, it is a workout where you may have like a 10 minute workout, but in those 10 minutes, you're literally dying. Like you're running as fast as you can. You're lifting heavy things, you're doing whatever. So I have always found for me that when I am consistent with CrossFit and when I am consistent with like that level of activity, I always felt like I looked better because, and I've probably talked about this before, but as a weather person, you are not just here up. Okay. Like it was your, pretty much your whole body. All right. So like this is just speaking from my own personal, like natural people go up and people go down in weight. That's a thing that happens naturally. You have babies, um, you know, you just, it just happens period, whatever it may be, the natural cycle of life. I always felt better if I thought I looked pretty decent. There were days where I was on the weather, doing the weather, feeling like, oh, man, like I don't love the way I'm looking today. Might have been part of my outfit, might have been part of whatever. So because of that, we have always kind of. Well, and how much did your weight fluctuate though, Megan? Because probably um, not that often, right? Maybe 10 pounds up and down ish. I know that, yeah, there was one point where you were working really hard because I mean, everybody gains weight and loses weight, right? But yep, 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 yep. Yeah, I did. Um, What did I do? I did like a a diet thing and it wasn't anything crazy and it certainly wasn't restrictive um, in terms of the amount that you were eating, but it was really more just like the stuff that you were eating and like on a schedule, it was almost the same thing every day. And I did lose a significant amount of weight, but I remember being excited because I could get into my favorite dress, which was this like purple dress that I like, it was so cute that it was like a small size and I, you know, but then guess what? I wasn't allowed to wear it because it was sleeveless, right, right. but I did anyway. I wore that dress and did not care because I was like, I don't even care if I get in trouble because I'm back in this bad boy and I'm going to wear it. <laughs> All right. So, so here's, fun. here's the picture I was talking about. Okay. So this was like a big deal. Uh, obviously okay. this was, you know, when people say, well, who, who was the, one of the most famous people you interviewed? And mm-hmm. I know Mitt Romney's probably not like top of the food chain famous, but he was running for president. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> but pretty if it was Aaron, Yeah. So if you look at my arm there, that right here, those are black and blue marks from dubs, (laughs) which is double. Oh yeah. See, and I tagged my coach then at this point, because he was on my arm Um, because I was, I think I was still learning him then. uh, And so we called him tiger stripes. So so dubs dubs are double unders in the CrossFit world. And, um, I think I was just learning them. And as you're learning them, you just, you get black and blue. Okay. And but down. we have to take it. We have to take it back, Erin, because like people might not even know what double under is jump rope. Okay. Okay. Like, yeah, thank you. If you're jump roping, you can do like jump, 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 jump. Or you can do two times with the rope under your feet while you're jumping in the air. So what does that mean? You have to jump higher and you have to have more intensity and you got to have like a real rhythm to it. Mm-hmm. And you have to have mm-hmm. like I guess your mechanics have to be right. So you're not hitting yourself in the arm, which happens to everybody. And yeah, so like we literally, Erin was coming in with her stripes on her arm. I was coming in with bruises like right here. (laughs) You never Um, know, but it was worth it. I still, you know. Yeah, no, and um, I feel like 
it is funny that we were all basically into CrossFit, but I think same thing, like, and generally there's a noom class and maybe, you know what I think probably part of it is as TV people, there's this much of us that's competitive, right? Which is why we probably much do of us. well. Yeah. Can you, can you reframe that and say all of us? Like, yeah. Aaron. Yeah. And I think that's a huge part of it because if you are doing a CrossFit class, you are seeing how everyone else is doing. If you are the slowest one, meaning AKA the least fit likely, then you are the last one working out and everyone else is sitting on the floor staring at you, which I, nobody ever wants to be. Because I did CrossFit through some pregnancies too. And oh, you did? Yeah. yeah. Running like this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, not, so, I mean, you're, you're competitive. I'm competitive. Yeah. It's a thing. Like we would not have been successful in the industry we were in without a very competitive nature because it, even though you're not technically competing against someone else on a daily basis when you're on the air, it takes that kind of mentality to be successful in that yeah. industry. Well, and you will know it in the newsroom. If you got beat on a story, you will know it. You will hear about it from everybody. You will hear about it from the instructor. Yeah. There was a moment that stays with me and it made me a better reporter. When I was in Texas, so again, it was my first job in Lubbock, Texas, um, there was an inmate escape at the local jail and it wasn't a big deal. But, you know, again, I, I, I did not major in TV. I was an English major. And so learning how to write for TV is very different. Yeah. And so there was this reporter who'd been in the market for like a long time. He was just is, was a great reporter. And so he did it where it was like, so Joe Schmo walked out the doors and they have the cameras like pushing out the doors. He hopped in a cab and he went here. And so the news director called me into an edit booth, press play on this reporter story. And he goes, he beat you. He beat you. And that was all he needed to say. And you were like, that was it. I'm going to do this better. Yeah. But it was true. And you know what? And that's okay. Like, I I think... So this is something, this is like, this goes literally back to the reason I have my kids in sports. Like this is a big leap, but you'll follow me here. The world is competitive. Your life is competitive. To be successful, you have to be a certain level of competitive, unless you're just extraordinarily lucky and like the most Zen yoga master in the universe and people start following you. Like They don't work in TV news. They don't work in TV news. Zen yoga masters do not work in TV news. Mm -mm. No. so my kids are in sports. Why? Not because I think they're going to be like, you know, college scholarships. And uh, I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Right. But, but that's not why they're there. They're there because I want them to learn how to fight through like adversity and mm-hmm. how to keep going and how mm-hmm. to work with other people. And all mm-hmm. of that is stuff that you put on any job. But I think in TV, it's like, even more intense. Everything in TV is more intense. So Right. And I also feel like dealing with difficult personalities is very much a part of TV and being able to put something together. Not only is it like working very closely with generally a photographer or a producer. Editor. um, Sorry. With an editor. Yeah. Or at many people. Yeah. And there are some people in TV news who are salty and that's fine. I like salty people too, but, and especially when also it's creative, right? And so everybody's kind of coming at it with how it should look and feel. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I say this, maybe a photographer would say, otherwise it's my story. It's going to be how I want it. I will listen to your input and it, if it's better and I think it's better then yeah, let's do it that way. But yeah. um, trying to find that ground where people still feel heard, you know, but it's still your name being attached to a product. Um, we've kind of sagged from fitness, but <laughs> what? no, it's, we'll it's all in. related though. No, for real. Like, I think that's why we like CrossFit because when mm. you get there, there is a certain like community to it. You're all trying to fight through something together. Like it all goes back to it. It's like sports work. Like all this stuff is the type of personality that ends up in TV. Like <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. you go towards difficult things. I think that's what we're trying to say here is mm-hmm. that, yeah, we worked out because it was something that we really needed for the old job we had. But like, also I find myself gravitating, gravitating towards hard things, difficult things. Because then once I conquer them, I feel so much better about it. And I think that is why, even though TV was so darn hard sometimes, I think that's why I stayed in it as long as I did. Because you were literally conquering something every single day. Right, right, right. Every day. 
Do Sparta. you feel like there were women with whom you were competing at a station? Um, yeah, usually. Yes. In some times in my career and sometimes not. Now, see, I think you might have felt it more than I did because if you're in the weather department, chances there's are there's generally just one you. you. Yeah. Yeah. And like usually if you look at a weather department, it might be half men, half women. Uh, they might have a brown haired woman and a blonde haired woman and you're not necessarily in direct competition. So I think in weather, there's probably less of that. If you're a reporter or you're an anchor and the pool of people that are at the station that can do the same job you do, I feel like you might feel that more. Am mm -hmm. I right? Oh yeah, absolutely. And yeah. especially when you have all eyes on you who are there to say you got beat, right? I mean, it's not just you, it's management saying who can do this better because it's always the same thing it's reading the news it's telling the same story that's going to be told by a morning reporter afternoon reporter yeah. evening reporter reporters across the street it is apples to apples every day so yes you you have to make sure your apples are great <laughs> <laughs> but you get why that that gets exhausting after a while like i'm saying you to the people out there in the universe but like that is a merry-go-round that you cannot get off. Every day is some kind of competition, um, even if it's just with yourself, maybe just to look better than you did before or to say something better than you did before. And I am all for always improving yourself and going through hard things. But there comes a time, I think, in every person in TV's career where it's like, exhausting. <laughs> it's exhausting. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. But it is addictive, I right? Think so. I mean, we wouldn't be doing it if there weren't. And okay, I'm going to say this and I'm probably going to sound really cocky, but okay, we, again, we're in the third largest market in the country. So we were very good at what we did. Yeah. So it was often that you could do the job better than other people. You can That's still look nice. at those apples and say, my apples were better. Yeah. And between you and me, Megan, I still have difficulty watching the local news because I look at it and I can, I say to myself, I would have done that better. I, I would have done it differently and my way would have been better. I agree. And part of that is the type of personality that goes into TV, which is you have to, <laughs> you have to be really confident about who, about yeah. how good you are. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Otherwise you ain't going to, you ain't going to survive. <laughs> I mean, like yeah. you'll be left back in market 202 or something like that, because you have to have a certain, um, amount of belief in yourself to be able to go through the hard things you have to go through, but also to get on the air and sell it. Cause let's that, be honest. And that's what it comes down to the selling of it. How many yeah. times were you told, Megan, what do you do? If you don't know how to pronounce something, what do you do? What did I do if I didn't know how to pronounce something? I'm going to see if it's the same as mine. Well, if there came up a town breaking news, you don't really have enough time to research it. What do you do? I would say I would, for me, if it was weather, I would go to the town nearby and say just to the west of Westmont. Because <laughs> my rule of thumb is, and you'll hear yeah. this many times on the news desk, say it with confidence, right? Oh, that's what you did. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it could be some new cancer treatment or some new kind of cancer. One of those things where you come across the word and you're like, does anybody know how to pronounce glioblastoma? But like, no, you say it with don't. confidence. Huh? That most people don't. So you probably can, if you say it with confidence, you can sell it. Yeah. Now, well, that being said, I am a person who crosses her T's and dots her I's. And I will always try and find out if there is a correct way to pronounce it. But if there wasn't, yeah. say yeah. it with confidence. Yeah. No, I mean, like for me, I didn't happen as much because most of the weather things that were happening in the market I was working in, I was very well versed and familiar with. Like that, mm -hmm. I'm not going to have some random name popping up other than potentially some kind of city or something like that that I mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that has um, happened. Yeah. One of my friends in Rhode Island, and I actually would love to have her on as a guest sometime, she was a meteorologist and she had just started in the market and there was flooding on the Winasquatucket, you know? <laughs> and it was like she said, she was certain that each time she said the river, it came out a different way on air, you know? <laughs> Probably did. Well, and there's a lot of those Native American names up there and in other markets that are really tricky. Well, yeah, I get, I used to get nervous because sometimes I would do the weather, like the national weather, and there you're not as familiar with every city. Now, chances are we were aiming for the largest big metropolitan area, so there was no problem anyway, but like there were times where I was like, ooh, <laughs> but I don't have to say that on the air. Or like you're talking about, even in local markets, you'll sometimes have to talk about like an international cyclone or something like that. And those names were usually crazy because if you don't 
No, guys, like if it's in the Atlantic basin, so if it's a if it's a hurricane in the Atlantic, it's going to be English, French or Spanish name, because those are the languages that people speak in that basin for the most part. And then if you cross over into the Pacific, well, <laughs> well, how about the Japanese, volcano, Chinese, like it gets the volcano that was erupting in Iceland and it was like Elifiokul. I, I remember that one. I still can't <laughs> say it. Like, that's the thing. Like, you're going to yeah. pop, that stuff's going to pop up. And you right. either find a great workaround for it or you just go for it and do that. So I was, I was doing, I was reading a piece of news with a meteorologist at one of my stations. And so it was one of those where like we were sharing a read and she was coming across a word, which was a location, I want to say that she couldn't pronounce <laughs> and she skipped it. Yeah. But you wouldn't know it listening at home that okay. she had skipped it. But I remember thinking like, what a cop out, man. Yeah. <laughs> the weather person thing. Because we are not used to reading a script either. So like mm. it's all subject to, um, you know, debate <laughs> according mm. to me. Like but nothing was nothing was scripted. Everything was ad lib. So when you're doing the weather, and this is something we've actually never talked about before. So people may not know this. Like Aaron's stuff when it was a story about a news, it was scripted. So mm -hmm. you, your challenge was how do I read this story and make it seem like I'm not reading it. And then when the story is over, how do I add some kind of uh, commentary or something that's going to add to the story? Value add. The yep. next one. Okay. Mm -hmm. For me, it was how do I take whatever Aaron tossed to me and somehow spin that into whatever my first graphic was, which was then my weather story. So you've got graphics behind you in weather that are kind of guiding you through the story that you plan to tell. And you set those up before you go on the air. And then it's all like whatever wants to come out of your mouth, you can do, <laughs> which is right, where so I belong. Here, here's my pause. Um, let's see where Megan goes with this. Okay. Uh Megan, speaking of this record heat in California, they may even have to have rolling brownouts or blackouts. What are we expecting here at home? Yeah, well, okay, as that high pressure system that's creating all the heat, this dome of heat across the West, it's going to move east slowly through the week. So once it gets out of California and pushes into the plain states and then eventually over us, it's going to still have a lot of heat associated with it. So that's going to mean our temperature goes up well above average. Brownouts are not a thing for us as much because our temperature will be moderated a little bit, but we're still talking about intense heat, potential for records. I'll have more coming up today at 5. See, that was awesome. That was perfect. Um, also, I thought like you would have gone for 10 seconds and you just went for probably like 40. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's also another thing. That's also another thing that happens because like uh, you're a weather person, like maybe we are the most egotistical of all. I don't know because we always go longer. Like, I feel like I have something more to share. You should be listening to me. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I, I've worked with meteorologists before too. When, when there is a breaking news, breaking weather s s event, yeah. um, and you're getting cues from your producer, which is always rap, rap, rap. Always. They'll yeah, they'll visibly on camera go like this. As in, <laughs> I'm not listening to you anymore. This is my show. You just like at some point you just don't even because okay, because this is something that happens too. The producer's job is to keep the show on track. They're steering the ship. The anchor's job is to read the words and and ride on the ship that the producer is steering. The weather person's job is to get the weather out and make sure people know what's happening, right? Okay, so like I always felt like I was on the ship, but also I had to answer to management and the viewers and whomever else if I did not get the full weather story out. So there were times where I hadn't even gotten to my seven-day planner yet or, you know, five-day or whatever you have at whatever station, and they were wrapping me like vigorously, but I was like, I have to do this because if I don't do this, there's a sponsor on it. I'm going to get hauled into the news director's office. Like, I'm just going to keep going. Like, you're going to have to cut the camera off and go to Aaron because I have to do it. And yeah. so there's, there's a lot of that that goes on too. And it's interesting what's going on behind the scenes there because like, so then you're trying to concentrate. You're trying to talk as fast as you can. You're trying to still sound like you meant to say whatever it is you're saying. Get through everything with enough information that people feel like they got something out of it. And they're screaming in your ear. And the floor director's probably doing this. It's like that, yeah. <laughs> it 
it's pretty, it's pretty interesting sometimes, I think. Yeah. We've all been there. Yeah. Um, all right. We wanted to make this one shorter. I think we're we there. Did. We literally were did all not stay on topic. Place. Yeah. I mean, everywhere, all the places. But we are competitive and maybe that's part of what it is, right? Yeah. I mean, yes. Erin, yeah. the answer to that is always. Yes. Always. Yes. Yeah. Pretty much. Like um, if I look back at my life, I'm like, yeah, that's because I wanted to win <laughs> or whatever. Yes. Yes. You look great. But the devil hooks are... Devil, like that, that comes with having kids, doesn't it? Tell me that that's a mom. Oh, I've had these forever. But but you well, didn't out, have them before you had like kids. Out? You didn't have them before you had kids, right? No, I think I did. I don't know. I mean, I, then I think there's a difference between like, is your hair broken or is it baby hair? Like maybe in my early days it was baby hair and now it's broken hair. I no, this is like max length for that hair. Yeah. No. Yeah, right. It won't grow. And that's another thing. You know, all the heat tools, all that crap. We are not staying on topic today. No. All right. Uh, good luck making a thumbnail for this, Megan. <laughs> I'm just going to put a pile of garbage on the right-hand side of the thumbnail. <laughs> Catch all. Disgusting today. Pile of garbage. Everything that comes up. Flow of consciousness. Yes. Um. All right. Please like and subscribe if you like us talking about nonsense. And we will answer questions, though, too. So if you have questions about any of this nonsense, let us know. Yeah, because you know what's funny? I, I'm going to go again. <laughs> <laughs> again, this is the weather in Megan. <laughs> Here we go. I'm going to have that done yet. Um, I find that people ask me questions about stuff that is just so something we're used to, but like they really don't know. So if you have those questions and you're really, really curious about something, it will be really fun for us to teach you about it. Yeah, we, should, we will do. We are going to do a mailbag and a top questions answered, maybe even an AMA thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye, Megan. Bye, everybody.